rolling. Right, so well, we're in the St. James Cathedral Rectory here with some of the principals that run this place, <laughs> including the pastor in the center. You want to go over to the pastor here? Sure, let's just Father swing around Ryan, here. Father, thank you. Thank We're going to ask them some questions in a moment after we introduce, well, you see your twins, so how am I supposed to do, just name yourself. Then. Maria, Maria Laughlin, yeah. And Karina Laughlin. And Karina Laughlin, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been really a lot of help to me in the past for other stories. And I've done way too many stories on this place. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's it. That's a, we censor them. No more after this. Okay. <laughs> but were you happy with the pictures that uh, that Jean managed from the... They were wonderful, especially the one looking down at the altar through the snow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was kind of fabulous. Kind of yeah. 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 My only regret is that I couldn't have a video camera running yeah. at the same time as so I could get the yes. whole thing going. Yeah. But well, how, our principal question is because we don't run these for long. But is how did it occur to you to, to do a service that has to do with the hundredth anniversary of such a catastrophe as opening a hole in your roof? Well, I'll I'll start. Um, I'm sort of into marking moments, you know, and I kind of I'm interested in the history as these two are as well. But I remember you can correct me the timing, but I remember coming to a, a staff we have a weekly staff meeting, and I suppose it was a year and a half ago, was it? Mm -hmm. Saying you know this is coming up in a year and a half, February second, two thousand sixteen, and we got to do something. Then we got talking. Mm -hmm. You can <laughs> fill in the rest of that. Well. I've always loved exploring the story and exploring the microfilm from that period because they don't write newspapers like that anymore. They just had a wonderful, <laughs> colorful way of expressing themselves and telling stories. And it's so we have all these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so there are all these great texts about it, and not only the news reports, but editorials where um, the whole city was kind of lamenting the destruction of the dome, and so. Uh, the idea for the script came from what if we just had readings from these texts that nobody yeah. really gets to see or um, experience. Yeah. So gradually, a uh, kind of idea for it came together with readings from the actual sources, um, newspapers supplemented by like the, the Sisters of the Holy Names Chronicle, which would have been definitely the very first account written down. Mm -hmm. The sisters who ran the cathedral school and lived close by, mm -hmm. part of their um, custom is to keep a chronicle of events. Mm -hmm. Most of the events are, you know, the bishop visited, the pastor came for tea, mm -hmm. um, there, we opened a new classroom, there were new desks donated by so-and-so, and then the dome collapse was in there too. <laughs> okay. and, uh, so it's just a great, great telling what this story. Is my it yeah. Really, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Truth of the matter, I suppose, if someone had lost their life in that, yeah. we wouldn't have been celebrating or, or marking it a hundred years later. Right. Maybe we would have had a, uh, a funeral or a memorial service or something. Yeah. But the fact that no one was in there, that, that it was only the building, and, the, and then there's some kind of amusing stories, or at least one amusing story about the whole collapse, then we, it, it just it, it seemed like it was rife for, for uh, you know, celebrating and marking and having some fun as well as some serious, you know, moments as well. We did both. Well, being in the Oculus, I could hear little snippets and bits and pieces. I was mostly concerned with sort of crawling around and going up and down and right. getting different angles. But one thing I did hear, which I think we put a version of it in the column, was that the the uh, the blame was was uh, was put upon New York City New York. in some way. Heinz Lafarge were the ac architects, New York firm. <laughs> so the local architect Louis Beezer, who was one of Bishop O'Day's favorite architects, he built O'Day and he built the cathedral yeah. school. Yeah, Beezer, yeah. big deal. Beezer. Big name. Yeah. He kind of did the first analysis, and he said no blame can attach to the building committee or to anybody local who was involved uh, because all plans for the building were made in New York. <laughs> of course, later I think they did determine it was the fault of a steel beam that was manufactured a little closer to the point. <laughs> it was irrelevant. It was the Seattle foundry. Yeah. <laughs> See, we got it wrong in the newspaper, but that's okay. Uh, Paul, you do point. know the, the Father Noonan story, though, the pastor. Maybe tell it again. Well, I mean... So you need to sort of tell the background that St. James was widely regarded in Seattle as being a bit of a reach 
to build this huge temple on the hill when right. there weren't many Catholics in Seattle. There were a lot more Protestants and others. Uh, certainly Catholics were in the minority, and then they built the biggest church in town on top of the hill overlooking the city, and, and then eight years later it collapses in on itself. And uh, the, so the story is that Father Noonan, Bill, William Noonan, stood there surveying this wholesale catastrophe, the wreckage of, of the cathedral. Wait a he, second. We've got special effects in the background. Don't need Can that. you hear that? Uh, it, I like how it came in with the word catastrophe, though. That was a nice timing. Cue the, yeah, cue the sound effects. I think it's past now. I'm okay. So, fine. so he, the story is that he, sur while surveying this, standing next to him was the uh, cub reporter at the Catholic Northwest Progress, a man by the name of Bill O'Connell, who later became the editor. Mm -hmm. And he supposedly turned to him, and it's pretty well authenticated, and said, Now, Willem, not a word of this to the press. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, and, and of course we have three the Seattle had three dailies in those days and word did get to the three dailies it certainly did yeah. Yeah. four inch Wonderful. letters <laughs> four inch letters yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. But I, yeah it is fascinating how many um, St. Catholic churches are on hills and how the Catholics managed to choose uh, elevated positions for building. Absolutely. I think Bishop O'Day had that in mind. Yeah. You're quite right. I mean, West Seattle, um, this one, yeah. Queen Anne Hill. Uh, there Doesn't have to be a big hill, but just the highest point the highest on the ridge. Point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He and this one had a. This one had actually a, a neon cross on top, right? It had, well... I'm probably not neon. What would you say? I think the images are the cross have the light bulbs around it. Oh. But there's a story from the earliest days that sailors coming into Puget Sound could see it from a huge distance because there was yeah. no other skyline. So they could see it when they entered the sound way out. Yeah. And there's a poem about it, actually, that hmm. a sailor wrote back in 1910 or something like that. It's kind of a bit of doggerel. Did you memorize the poem? I did not memorize the poem. Did you, the poem, did you? Uh, it's, it's something like... It's a light I see. Tis a beacon for me of the path that I should have trod. That's the part I remember. And trod, of course, rhymes with God at some yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But how did the service go? How are you? Well, you know, first of all, we didn't really think of it as a service, did we? Did no, you think of it as a service? Well, typically at the cathedral, we do liturgical events that are quite solemn. Year after year, we repeat them and we do variations on them. It's not often that we do a one-time only, something we've never tried before, shaking everything up. Mm -hmm. But um, Father Ryan visited the Mohai when it first opened, and there's a wonderful little exhibit there about the great f fire, mm -hmm. the Seattle fire. And they did it with music and fun. And so he came back from that. He said, go see that exhibit. That's kind of what I want the dome collapse to be. So ours was going to be music and fun. Mm -hmm. And so we did. Well, many of the songs you chose were... were well, the songs had both historic um, associations with the early days of the cathedral. Some really solemn moments, too. Yeah. But also fun. So we did, we had step dancing uh, with the Terra Academy of Dance. Those kids have never done step dancing inside the church before never and to, <laughs> probably not <laughs> um, and they were so excited just about the acoustic possibilities of doing mm -hmm. the, the hard heel dancing in the space which mm -hmm. pretty deafening and then we had a kazoo band because the cathedral school actually had a kazoo band that was about 40 strong Good. in the early days and they had outfits to go with it and about two minutes was enough. I <laughs> it was quite enough. Funny. But the reason for the, that particular part of the entertainment was, and you came up with this, the two of you, was they did a fundraising project to raise the money to rebuild the, the cathedral. And uh, lo and behold, they took over the, Seattle, the Metropolitan Theater. You know the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Theater, Paul. Yeah, yeah. It was the theater in Seattle. Yeah. You know, right there in the embrace of the Olympic Hotel. Yeah. They took that over one night. How they were able to do that, it, it had some good connection. It wasn't in the embrace yet of the hotel, the Olympic it was there. Right later yeah. in the ring. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was by itself at that mm -hmm. point, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I just remember it when it was, yeah. yeah. Anyway, somebody had a good connection. They took that over one night and did a kind of a variety show, mm -hmm. I guess you'd call it. Uh -huh. And they used the the kids were part of it. There were other mm -hmm. things, too, but mm -hmm. the step dancing was part of that. The kazoo band was part of that, mm -hmm. and whatever else. I don't know how much they raised, but... Mm -hmm. Well, they went on with more fundraising projects, so not enough. Yeah, not enough, but something. And yeah. 
so that was kind of a way to lighten it up and mm-hmm. make it make it fun. Yeah. But we did. Yeah, there were some sad moments. We uh-huh. sang "Come Holy Ghost" because that was sung at the dedication yeah. of the cathedral, and mm-hmm. every every Catholic, you know, whether they they've been in church for fifty years or not, kind of knows that it's in the Catholic top ten, mm-hmm. and the, you know, and they and and they did some. The choir did some music from the. Uh, both from the original dedication and the rededication of, of, of 1916. Mm-hmm. One of the things that was really fun was um, a piece by the first music director of the cathedral, um, Dr. Franklin Palmer, who was Boston. Born, he was from Boston. And um, was a dermatologist, but also <laughs> an organist and choir master. Mm-hmm. And so it was a piece that he composed for the dedication of the cathedral. And just hearing it, you know, with the, the 1907 organ, it makes you think, wow, there was a lot happening in this place in those early days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it's pretty, it's not, you know, immortal music, but... Pretty sophisticated. Very, yeah, very yeah. sophisticated. He had studied in France under one of the premier French composers of the day, and so, yeah, he was something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe Poulenc, or maybe... <laughs> this yeah. is a little before Poulenc, I guess. Yeah, a little bit before yeah, Poulenc, yeah. yeah. He studied under Charles Murray Vidor, but who mm-hmm. was Vidor... Oh, Vito. Yeah, he studied yeah, under Vito. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, did you record this event? We tried, but we had just transitioned into a new sound system literally two days before, so we couldn't figure it out. Nothing came. Do you have any video from below of the snow coming down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I'll describe the dramatic moment because not that many people were there. Um, so the program told the story of the building of the cathedral and the kind of the hubris involved in that because it was a gigantic cathedral for a small number of Catholics. Mm-hmm. Then um, we had one of the Sisters of the Holy Names who still minister in this diocese, but they were the teachers at the school back in the day. So Sister Eileen Clark... Right. came over from Holy Names Academy and she was the narrator of the actually read the portion of the Holy Names Chronicle hmm. so when she described the moment she paused and said we heard what we thought was a heavy snow slide and she paused and the organ an organ improvisation by Dr. Paul Thornock sort of recreated the sound that may have been heard if you had been in there when the ceiling fell in and meanwhile the lights went out and then these blue lights came up on the altar and snow fell. Snow fell from the Oculus. Everybody's like, It was apocalyptic. (laughs) The sound from the organ was really, it was apocalyptic. You would have thought something was crashing in. You know, it was quite amazing what he achieved with, and of course, in this beautiful, so it was this contrast between this this awful awful moment and this gentle snow. He must have studied with Messian. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, maybe so, (laughs) Gene. Now, Gene, do you feel uh, fulfilled now? Yes, yeah, I think think that's great. Any any plans for future events? (laughs) Well, 100 years from now. Two thousand one hundred and sixteen. Be there. <laughs> What's our next event? we got to come up with something. <laughs> we do. We're not short of ideas. We just haven't looked far enough ahead. Yeah. yeah, some people did suggest we should commemorate the Dome every year. Every year. <laughs> but I think we'll look for something different next time. <laughs> A dome. Who, so, who... Who came up with the snow machine? That would be my final. Karina. <laughs> ah, well, that was, that was delightful. Yeah. Karina, what is your title here? I'm the director of liturgy. Yeah. And that includes snow machines? It does. On <laughs> All special effects. We always yeah. say other duties as assigned. <laughs> yeah. um, other Maria, duties as assigned? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maria, snow what machines. is your title? My title is a pastoral assistant for stewardship and development, but I also do all the communications. So the website, our parish magazine, and the um, you know Facebook, Instagram, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you all very Thanks much. Thanks for coming and being and interested in our Dome's Day. <laughs> We're using you. Oh, by the way, I did come up with Dome's Day. I mean, most people got do it, but it was like Dome's Day. But somebody said to me, isn't it supposed to be like Dome's Day? Well, that's clever. Oh, yeah, well, that's really clever. <laughs> that's clever. So we'll take it. I have fun with Dome's Day. Yes, yeah, it's yeah.
I believe five years ago, so it was probably 2010 or 11, I had a funeral here in the cathedral for Margaret Anderson, who had been a third grade student in the cathedral school the day the dome collapsed. She lived in the neighborhood and had distinct recollections of the whole day. It was mm. kind of remarkable. And she missed being... She missed being oh, in the eyes. cathedral. The kids, the school kids had been in the cathedral that morning for mass. It was a feast on the church calendar. and. Uh, but the Mass was in the morning happily and the crash was in the afternoon. Wow.